In the wee hours of Monday morning, around 4 a.m., a burglar dressed in yellow gloves, a face mask, and a dark jacket pulled off a unique break-in at Dr. Kevin's pharmacy in St. Nicholas. Instead of the usual methods, this burglar used a sledgehammer to break through the wall, creating a hole to crawl through and gain access to the pharmacy. Dr. Kevin was left in shock. Let's hear from him. That's wild. I've never heard anything like that before. I've heard of people, you know, kicking down a door or breaking a window, but I mean to sledgehammer open a wall, uh, that was uh, that was crazy. And then he like crawled his way down and he had like a, an axe and a sledgehammer with him and he actually like axed the wall and then broke down the wall and then entered the pharmacy from the wall and then just kind of free for all took anything and everything that he could. He, he wrecked the place. I mean, it, it was bad. We walked in, it looked like a bomb went off. It was bad. The entire heist took nine minutes. The burglar made off with a stash of medicines, syringes, diabetic products, and even prescription bottles for current patients. The place was wrecked, and upon walking in, Dr. Kevin felt like a bomb had gone off. In a surprising turn of events, a liquor store in Colorado G&E Liquors in Aurora became the target of not one but two robberies in a single night. The first incident, captured on surveillance video, involved a Hummer crashing through the store's glass front. Two individuals emerged from the vehicle, with one assessing the ATM. Unable to dislodge the bolted down machine using the Hummer, they resorted to ramming it repeatedly. Despite their efforts, the chain used to secure the ATM and cryptocurrency machine to the Hummer snapped. Undeterred, they decided to manually pull the machines out of the store, successfully making off with the cryptocurrency machine. Following two more attempts, they managed to snatch the cash box from the ATM. Astonishingly, the owner watched the entire ordeal unfold on his security camera from home. When the police arrived, the suspects had vanished. Unfortunately, hours later, upon the owner's return, the store fell victim to another robbery, with someone helping themselves to merchandise. The owner says he hopes that his insurance will cover the damage to the store. In the glow of a brightly lit Burger King next door, a bold crook decided to make a daring move at Houston Jewelry just before midnight. He delivered a powerful swing, crashing through a plate glass window, navigating his way into a storage room, and then breaking another glass door to access the showroom. The whole escapade was caught on camera as the suspect, armed with a hammer, skillfully broke display cases and snatched whatever caught his eye. Fortunately, the stolen items weren't of high value and they weren't gold since the store's most precious inventory is securely locked up every night. However, the aftermath brought a significant cost for repairs, surpassing the value of the pilfered items. Busted some display cases and grabbed some of the jewelry. Thankfully, a lot of the items that he got were not highly valuable. They weren't gold. Look, miss a piece of glass. Thankfully, we weren't here. Thankfully, a lot of the nice pieces were not taken. This wasn't the first brush with a crime, Back in 2017, a masked and armed individual attempted to rush in as the store opened. Grandmother Juddy Memel's quick instincts thwarted the attempt, pushing the intruder out as he fired shots that hit display cases and the ceiling. And he fires the three times, pop, pop, pop. Manager Steven Reiner sees this recent incident more as a nuisance and hopes the man involved in the crime will be caught. You have nightmares for several days and it's just not the same and we can bring him to justice. The silver lining is that the intruder injured himself a bit while breaking into the showroom, leaving behind DNA evidence that could lead to his arrest. Take a look at this audacious daytime robbery at Pollock Jewelers in Sawgrass Mills Mall. A woman dressed all in black with a mask on strolls into the jewelry store while another customer is already there. Suddenly, she gets close to the counter and, within seconds, starts using bear spray on everyone in the store. Simultaneously, two hooded and masked men enter, smashing the display cases. The shaken customer is seen desperately trying to escape while holding onto his dog's leash. 
The thieves ransacked the place, making off with a number of high-end watches. The surveillance video outside captures them running across the parking lot, eventually jumping into a getaway car and speeding off. It's affected me tremendously. And I've heard of little, like, you know, grab and runs and things, but nothing ever as vicious like this, no. The two employees who witnessed this incident no longer work there, too frightened to return. Steven, the owner who has run the store for 22 years in the same mall, is shocked as such a brazen event has never happened before. He is determined to see these individuals off the streets, and authorities are actively searching for them. This surveillance footage captured a guy dressed in dark clothing with a black mask and backpack entering a church in Texas. The suspect walks in, heads behind a desk, and starts rummaging through things. The pastor, speaking to the TV station KTRK, revealed that the guy took everything from the church's safe, including offerings from the previous Sunday service. When I see that video, it, it, I feel sorry uh, for the individual, really. If I could communicate anything from us as a church, it would be, we forgive you. Despite this, the pastor extends forgiveness to the suspect. This is what happens when people can't afford pricey Apple products. Security camera footage from the Apple store in the Promenade Mall in Temecula, California, captures a car slamming into the store's front door. Four people roll up in the car, smash through the glass front, and one of them boldly starts snatching iPhones and other Apple goodies from the display, stuffing them into their bags. The guy grabs as much as he can, but trouble looms for these robbers. While entering the store with the car was a breeze, escaping turned into a challenge. After a few attempts, the driver managed to maneuver the car out of the store, and the robbers fled the scene. Witness this chaotic smash-and-grab robbery captured on a cell phone video, showing about a dozen people inside a jewelry store at the Merst Mall. They're busting the glass display cases and swiping the jewelry within. This group of 10 to 15 individuals showed up wearing masks and carrying hammers, then swiftly jumped into parked cars waiting outside. While this unfolded, the man working at the jewelry store courageously covered his co-workers as the thieves ransacked the store. There was jewelry flying everywhere and glass flying everywhere. And they were running out. You could see the hammers in their hands as they were running out. Scary, really scary. That sound, I just find my key and, you know, I just close the... Half I close and I outside and I'm looking what happened. Several shops, including a nearby perfume store, closed after the incident. Officials deem this an unusual event for the community. We typically see these types of incidences in um, the Bay Area and other cities that are maybe not prosecuting uh, these types of cases. We don't typically see that here in Merced. Authorities have obtained both the cell phone video and surveillance footage and are actively searching for the group involved. This surveillance footage captures the moment a man strolls into the Walgreens near 76th and Center in Wauwatosa on June 9th. Within just 15 minutes of being in the store, he leaps over the pharmacy counter with a water pistol in hand. After stashing it in his waistband, he approaches an employee, grabs her by the collar, and pushes her toward the back of the store while repeatedly demanding the Percocets. The robber steers the employees throughout the pharmacy, making one pharmacist enter her code into a time-locked safe where the narcotics were stored. He shoves all the pill bottles into his sweatpants, tightly rolled around his ankles to ensure the pills stay in place. Meanwhile, as the robbery unfolds, a Walgreens employee calls the police and alerts them. To the surprise of the robber, they were waiting outside for him. I believe he's at the front, white t-shirt. We got him here, he's running through the parking lot. Get down, get down right now. Officers discovered nearly 6,000 oxycodone pills, cocaine, and keys to the pharmacy. Witness this audacious robbery at a Bronx jewelry store, all captured on camera. A man in a white t-shirt, black jeans, and a black hat gets buzzed in, then holds the door open for three others who are seen sprinting down the street. They storm into the store, brandishing hammers to smash display cases, quickly loading their bags with valuable jewels, and then making a swift escape on foot, making off with jewelry worth $2 million. Witnesses reported that the banging was so loud, 
they initially thought they were hearing gunshots. They came in, boom, 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 in and out and gone. Unfortunately, I'm sorry this happened to him. You know, unfortunately, you know, it's probably a short, but this type of stuff happened. Fortunately, no one got hurt in this audacious heist. In October, an audacious heist unfolded as a gang of masked men employed a circular saw to break into a silver store in Stamford Hill. The CCTV footage captured the group breaking through the shutters, filling sacks with silver, and swiftly making their exit. Surprisingly, the same store fell victim to another robbery a month later, once again orchestrated by a group of men using a power tool. They entered the store and returned with hands full of stolen items. Ever seen those ATM heist videos where they break in and snatch the cash box? Well, forget the norm. Picture this. Three daring robbers hit Hyde Park, not for the cash, but for the whole ATM machine itself, loaded it onto their truck bed, and vanished into the night. Step aside, Ocean's Eleven, because Houston's got its own squad, Houston 10. In a blink and miss it operation, they hit a weapons store with surgical precision. Picture this, 4.30 a.m., masks on, chains rattling, and a pickup truck screeching. Doors ripped off, they storm in. One guy vaults the counter, bypassing the rest, making a beeline for an assault rifle. Meanwhile, Others wielding hammers shatter glass cases, filling bags with handguns. From entry to exit, a mere 1 minute and 11 seconds, and over 50 weapons vanish. What it potentially means is you've got that many people now distributing firearms on the streets of Houston. The police offered a $5,000 reward to help catch these guys. Switching gears to a recent Apple Store heist in October, as employees tried to call it a day at 607 Walnut Street, a group barged in. In a flash, they scooped up everything in sight. Phones, laptops, tablets, and someone even walked away with an entire TV. Now the police are on the hunt, determined to bring these culprits to justice. A crew decided the front door of P.C. Richard on Cotman Avenue in Northeast Philadelphia needed a makeover, so they cut through the metal like it was butter. Armed with hammers and crowbars, they smashed through the glass doors, welcoming looters like it was Black Friday. In a chaotic 12 seconds, one guy emerges with a colossal TV, skids, and face plants on the broken glass. Others follow suit hauling TVs and boxed items out of the store. A daring individual grabs two TVs while another skillfully slides out with three. Detectives snagged screenshots, hoping the unmasked culprits would be recognized. Authorities are on the hunt, actively seeking these individuals. The Cook County Sheriff's Office unveiled footage of a crew breaking into an auto dealership in unincorporated Roselle on January 19th. Past midnight, Long after exclusive auto house had shuttered its doors, an SUV rolled up, disgorging eight to ten masked and hooded figures. A brick met the glass door, shattering the silence, and they swiftly unlocked the entrance. Guided by the glow of mobile phone flashlights, they breached another door at the back, snagging keys to luxury cars. The dealership became their playground for about ten minutes. Their loot, a jackpot of six luxury cars, three Audis, two Mercedes, and a Maserati. The manager and owner, alerted by the blaring alarm, notified the police, who arrived just as the culprits made their escape. It's been something that, you know, you could not imagine. You read about it, but then when, you know, it happens to you, you know, it's, it's more of a shock than anything else. Kind of like really scary that someone can just show up and do whatever they desire and just take off. I hope that these people, you know, these people get what they deserve. Please do whatever you can to protect yourself. Please do whatever you can to protect your businesses and your employees. 
Amid the shadows, there's a glimmer of hope. Oak Park police discovered one of the Audis abandoned. Currently, it's under investigation for potential evidence. Dramatic scenes unfolded at Allen's jewelry store in Irvine, captured by surveillance video. Around 12.30 p.m., three hammer-wielding thieves barged in with masked faces. With a swift and brutal display, they shattered glass displays, prompting two unsuspecting women to dive for cover. In a mere 60 seconds, Allen's life and decades of hard work crumbled. The masked robbers fled with a staggering haul, over $900,000 worth of jewelry. I do all the jewelry. And all the stuff that was in the showcase is my own pieces, and it just everything disappeared. This idea of coming and hitting us at this time is so brazen. You would think that they will come when it's not crowded. We know that we take a risk in this business. We know that. But customer walking in, they're not, they're not ready for this kind of atrocious violence that's committed. It just kind of shows you the mentality that they either don't think they're going to get caught or they don't care if they get caught. What's unique about, about this crew is the fact that they brought in tall, empty trash cans. I saw a video today that it looks like there's a similar uh, MO of crimes that occurred in Ontario and Downey uh, using those same type of trash cans. So the odds of those three being connected are probably pretty I can't stop because something like this happened. You know, we have to get on with life. I have a family to feed. I have bills. This lease still, we have to pay for it. Insure, all kinds of stuff. This doesn't stop. And I'm not stopping. Despite the footage, authorities are left with limited details on the culprits or their getaway vehicles. What sets these thieves apart? They came prepared with tall, empty trash cans to stash their loot, employing a similar method observed in robberies in Ontario and Downey. Police are connecting the dots, suspecting these three incidents might be linked. In May 2019, a weapon store faced a hit from a trio of masked and hooded men. The orchestrated act began with one wielding a rock, smashing it through the store's window. In a flash, he slipped inside, followed closely by his accomplice. Meanwhile, the third member kept watch outside as the lookout. The hall? A total of 15 weapons disappeared into the shadows. This isn't the first time this store has been targeted. In January 2019, a previous heist saw thieves vanish with 23 weapons, and those culprits were never apprehended. Adding a twist to the tale, the store is owned by a Mason police officer. Meet this serial thief causing a stir at the Sally Beauty Supply Store in Miami. This guy has a peculiar obsession with electronic clippers, going straight for them every time he enters the store. Despite committing this crime numerous times, the absence of surveillance cameras kept him under the radar. The subject appears to be a black male, medium built. It does appear that he has facial hair. One time before, he, he is seen wearing a black polo shirt with jean shorts, and then the second time, he's wearing a white t-shirt with some sort of design and jean shorts as well. At this time, it is unknown why he is placing these electronic clippers or why he is stealing these clippers. Our detectives are currently trying to investigate this case and locate this individual because apparently he has done this numerous times before. However, due to the fact there was no surveillance installed at that time, he was not captured in the past. The Our detectives are working around the clock to identify this subject. Uh, one thing we do want store employees to know, if you observe the subject walk into your store or any subject at all and you catch them stealing, please do not come into close proximity to the subject because at the end of the day you do not know if they're armed or if they're willing to harm you. We do advise that you get a detailed description of the subject and immediately contact police. However, he slipped up twice, caught on camera wearing a black polo shirt, and later a white t-shirt. Now the police are on his trail, actively seeking to bring this repeat offender to justice. This surveillance video from 2010 captures a robbery at Walgreens. Two men entered the store seemingly as regular customers, but their intentions became clear as one of them headed straight to the cash office. With weapons drawn, he demanded money, forcing the frightened manager and employee to the ground. Attempting to seize the cash, the robber took the keys from the manager, but he failed to open the drawer. Frustrated, he then coerced the employee and manager to open the drawer for him. A twist in the tale occurred 
when another employee who happened to be outside spotted the robber and sprinted away, raising the suspicion that she might alert the police. Realizing the potential threat, the robber and his companion, who was positioned outside, bolted from the store, executing a daring escape. Witness this smash and grab robbery that unfolded in Jersey City, particularly in an area known as India's Square. Although the surveillance camera wasn't recording, individuals present during the incident managed to capture videos. The audacious robbers, with one of them forcibly pushing a customer aside, entered Sarah's jewelry. Employees were compelled to the ground, and one of them even faced assault with a weapon. Why you press the button? And then he hit me, and then he pushed me back. Go inside. And he jumped in there and said, lay down, lay down. And I lay down there. He told me, lay down, lay down. and then. He's walking on me, but thanks God, he don't hit me or something. It's not like they just walk in and say, well, let me grab this stuff from the store. They must, they've been, I heard the news that they would be in the market two hours ahead of time. I believe they have to come and check and which one is more easy target to do it. And they don't even care what's going on outside. They swiftly made their escape in a getaway car, carrying off a hefty loot of $480,000 worth of jewelry and an additional $20,000 from the register. Two individuals forcefully entered Phoenix Rising Vapor Lounge in Houston, wielding sledgehammers. They shattered the glass doors and targeted the Bitcoin machine, smashing it to access the cash box before swiftly making their escape. The way that it was set up is there was like a little box inside of the, the machine itself. And so they broke into that box itself and, and, you know, took the box out and just left. They don't even buy anything here. They just come, say hi to us and turn around to the Bitcoin machine, put money in and leave. In response, the owner reinforced security by installing metal bar doors at the front entrance and tinting the windows. Earlier that week, four were hit in Vegas. Um, then after they hit them in Vegas, they came to ours and they hit ours and then a couple other places. Since then, we have uh, put in bars and we've also tinted our windows. Um, so we have taken that extra step of precaution. This, however, wasn't an isolated incident as these same individuals targeted four other Bitcoin machines in Las Vegas earlier that week. Two masked men entered Louis Vuitton at Westchester Mall, swiftly grabbing designer bags off the shelves. A struggle ensued with an employee, but both men managed to escape. In another incident shortly afterward at the same mall, the Burberry store was targeted, and the thieves made off with thousands of dollars worth of merchandise once again. Westchester Mall as well, just makes people open up their eyes that crime has to be stopped, you have to be tough on crime, and what we're dealing with right now is just the last two years coming home to roost where it's basically been lawlessness. This seems to be a pattern across the United States uh, where you know people are going into high-end places and uh, grabbing things and running out. Uh, so we are working with other law enforcement officials. Uh, we're exchanging intelligence. Crime is definitely not on the rise in the city of White Plains. Every uh, crime statistic is actually down. So we have police officers now that, that is in the Westchester Mall, and we also have plainclothes units that are typically around the city, but they're doing increased patrols inside the mall. You feel unsafe because um, when you go in there, you don't know who is watching you and whatever happens to you outside the shop is the problem. Following these incidents, security at Westchester was stepped up. Two Oakland Chinatown pharmacies fell victim to burglars just days apart. Surveillance video captured a U-Haul truck pulling up to New Oakland Pharmacy, with the driver repeatedly ramming the front door with the back of the truck. After the fourth attempt, the truck plowed through the thick metal bars ending up entirely in the lobby of the pharmacy. Owner Kam Tam spent much of the morning cleaning up the mess and assessing the damage. And then six people, you know, feline into the pharmacy. These burglars, they are very, very brazen. The one ton you haul truck ramping, you know, your store, I don't think anything can prevent them to come in. Another pharmacy owned by Tam, just a half block away, also faced a similar fate. Around 3.30 in the morning, eight armed individuals used crowbars to force their way into the business, also known as New Oakland Pharmacy. We get the, I think they really want to show that they have a because they pass the among themselves, they come well prepared. Because we know that they're professionals, they all wear gloves, 
and also the way they park their cars, you cannot see the license plate. In both cases, the burglars made off with a minimal amount, just a few bottles of cough syrup containing promethazine codeine. Despite the minor theft, the repair cost amounted to tens of thousands of dollars. In North Texas, two Bitcoin ATMs fell victim to robbers in the same month who employed high-powered pepper spray, also known as bear spray, to overpower clerks and rob the machines. In one incident, a man entered a mesquite gas station, purchased a Gatorade, and, while at the counter, looked directly at the camera. He returned, sprayed the female clerk with high-powered pepper spray, and proceeded to break into the Bitcoin ATM. In the Irving case, a heavier set individual in a gray hoodie sprayed the clerk, and another man handed him a crowbar to target the machine. It seems that these machines do contain some cash, and apparently there comes a point when you exchange bitcoins for cash. Bitcoin not being an actual physical currency, but nevertheless, uh, you can buy and sell Bitcoin ultimately through the use of traditional U.S. currencies. Once the suspects incapacitated the clerk, then they were able to just break into it and steal the, the cash cassettes. So this is fairly good video, both in, in our offense and in Mesquite's offense. It's one thing to, to steal or to rob from someone. It's another to hurt a, a defenseless clerk. Two men, one masked and the other unmasked, entered Lupita's jewelers in the Inland Empire. They smashed the display cases and made off with over $40,000 worth of jewelry. Undeterred, they proceeded to rob another Lupita's Jewelers in Fontana. Police successfully tracked down the suspect's vehicle and apprehended three suspects after a short pursuit. Two individuals, appearing to be robbery professionals, targeted Coral Springs Credit Union. One of them vaulted over the counter while his accomplice waited for him to open the door to the back office and gain access to the vault. The female employee, under duress, opened the door, allowing the intruder into the vault area, where he began stuffing money into a large bag. Shockingly, one of them violently dragged the female clerk across the floor by her hair. The duo made their escape from the credit union on a motorcycle, carrying a substantial bag of cash. These guys had the plan from the beginning to get to the vault, and usually that uh, uses a little bit more violence. There were some, some threatening words said. Oh yes, yeah, it, it was a, a, a pretty good take, and uh, like I said, it would be enough where uh, if somebody thinks they may know these people would have noticed uh, a change in lifestyle. Uh, and they got into the uh, black Chrysler 300, which I don't believe they know we uh, caught video of that. However, they had strategically placed their actual getaway vehicle nearby a black Chrysler 300 with tinted windows, and fled the scene in it. During a protest in Center City, Philadelphia, a group of teens and young adults exploited the situation to engage in looting. The group targeted various stores, starting with Foot Locker, where they looted merchandise, clothes, and shoes. I saw a bunch of people, like, just go into the lemon, clothes everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting by a window. I'm just gonna like look the other way. This is, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of scary. Their spree didn't end there. They also targeted the nearby Apple store, making off with various electronic devices. The Apple store looks pretty cleaned out. Really? Yeah, except for like computer monitors, but like all the Apple watches, iPhones look pretty. I mean, well, we watched like the Lululemon thing happen, and that was concerning just because. It looked like a lot of people got arrested at first, but they kind of let everybody go. Wow, okay. So, I mean, I would say like 30 plus people around the opposite direction away from the scene and then everything died down. At around 5 a.m., three individuals utilized a pickup truck to break into an ATM and extract the money. They secured a chain from the back of the truck to the ATM machine. With a robust push from the truck, the machine shattered, enabling the robbers to swiftly flee with the cash. Surveillance video captured an armed robbery at a Spanaway gas station. A person armed with a weapon entered, demanding the individual behind the counter to open the register 
and hand over all the money. Now, so open it up. Okay. Okay. All right. Give it to me. Put it all out. What can you do? You check the marble blacks too. Now, red, 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 red. Frightened, the employee complied and the robber swiftly made his exit. At 4.30 in the morning, a stolen vehicle rammed into the front door of Athens Weapon Club. Following the impact, four individuals entered the store and proceeded to grab weapons. These individuals swiftly fled the scene, making off with a total of 21 firearms. Faced with the urgency of a quick escape, all five suspects fled the scene in a white Audi with a sunroof, conveniently parked in the parking area. Two burglars smashed the front door of Eames Pharmacy in Lakewood, New Jersey. After breaking into the pharmacy, they made off with a significant quantity of opioid drugs, up to 2,000 pills, with a street value estimated between forty dollars to $50,000. Went to our safe, they took a hammer, they, they smashed it open, they took whatever they could get. Park us at an oxycodone. I was in shock, you know, like, my own neighborhood, you know, it's, it's scary. Less than half an hour later, the same burglars targeted Rafua Pharmacy, located just two and a half miles away from EMS Pharmacy, breaking in through the back door and stealing prescription drugs there as well. I was upset because we're here for the community. You never know, maybe someday they're not going to want to wait till we're out of here, you know, and they could come in while we're on the actual clock. They're probably selling it because why would you need such a high quantity if you're not, you know, you know, using it? You know their intent. Um, it's like, again, other people's hands that shouldn't be getting into. Two women casually entered a beauty supply store and made a beeline for the hair extensions section. One woman grabbed the racks and handed them off to her accomplice. She opened the door and she just ran out, ran out. So I said, what, 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 what's going on? And then I just come out and dropped the hairs and they just uh, ran away. The merchandise right here, mm -hmm. see? That whole thing. It's all gone. All gone and right here, that's the whole thing's gone. Hopefully in the future, it don't happen, this kind of you know, the ugly thing, this is really ugly. After swiftly grabbing what they could, they made a dash to their getaway car with a total of 72 packs of hair extensions valued at $4,500. A woman entered Ann's beauty supply on South Boulevard attempting to steal a wig. Unexpectedly, an employee confronted her, grabbed the wig from the woman's hand and tugged so forcefully that she landed on the floor. Despite this, the wig bandit managed to exit the store with the stolen wig. Your life is on the line. You're fighting for it, you know? I know I'm not a security guard, but you have to. That's a part of my job. I think uh, make uh, people look good, I think that makes me feel good. Yeah, it makes me afraid. But you gotta be strong enough to you can watch them, you know? If you're so aggravating and it's just, just so uncourseful. Fortunately, vigilant workers promptly called the police, providing them with a detailed description of her car. Subsequently, the police arrested her and charged her with theft. An individual employed an elaborate disguise, masquerading as an elderly person by wearing a mask. They entered the pharmacy and made their way to the counter. The unique approach to robbery involved presenting a note, likely a threat, at the counter, demanding oxycodone within 30 seconds. Been in contact with King Sport and we've reviewed video from, from each incident and it doesn't appear to be the same person. Our department's very aware of this and we, we're watching our pharmacies very close. I don't think they're going to use all of it, but uh, probably some of it, but I believe it'll, be, it'll hit the streets. We want to 
recover what they have and stop this stuff from continuing to poison the community. The person successfully made off with approximately $2,000 worth of goods. Two teenagers were caught on camera using an angle grinder to saw through a bike lock at Surrey Keys in the middle of the day. Despite being aware of the camera, the two youths managed to make off with an e-bike worth thousands of pounds. At approximately 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon, a crew of 14 people entered the Louis Vuitton store at Oak Brook Center. Inside, they pulled out garbage bags from their coats and began filling them with merchandise, making off with over $100,000 worth of merchandise. Once they entered the store, uh, they pulled out their, the garbage bags from, the, from their uh, coats and, and started uh, filling, uh, filling them with merchandise. We do have some information on the vehicles. Uh, we're, we're holding back that information right now, but, uh, but certainly we're working those leads in order to identify the su potentially identify the suspect. It's a pretty safe area. We come here all the time with kids, play, kids play outside. You don't expect to see that kind of thing happening outside of the city too, because I actually moved in from the city just recently, so I thought I escaped all of that. However, this wasn't the only Louis Vuitton case. Just a month prior, 30 miles away in the northern suburbs, 13 thieves and three getaway drivers targeted the Louis Vuitton store at Northbrook Court Mall, making away with $66,000 worth of merchandise. I don't know if there is a, an actual connection yet, but certainly there are similarities and our investigators are talking to their investigators. The Attorney General is looking at this investigation as well and whether or not uh, to tie it to a, a larger scale investigation. Picture this intense scene at Terry's Market in Dedham, Massachusetts, back in 2019. An armed, masked, and hooded figure strides into the convenience store, weapon in hand, demanding the storekeeper open the register. Following instructions, the keeper swiftly complies, but the drama doesn't end there. The intruder, unsatisfied, pushes for more cash. Another register opens, but that still doesn't cut it. <laughs> Nothing but that. Just, I know what's here. Come on. Please, nothing but that. Nothing. Don't nothing, lie nobody. Please. Don't lie to me. Please. Nothing but that. Please. Why are you lying? Why are you lying? Nothing but that. To ensure no interference, he swipes the storekeeper's mobile, keeping him at a distance behind the beverage refrigerator. Turn around. Get down. Where's your money? Where's the money? No, no, no. Yeah, you got to go. Look. 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 Stay right there. Stay right there. Don't sit. Sit on the table. Sit, sit down Can't on the table. Sit down on the table. Yeah. Okay, sit down. Okay. Turn around. Look this way. Okay. I don't want to. Stay like that for 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's a, if you look, don't look. Okay. Right. Don't worry. 
get a load of this real-life jewelry shop heist that seems right out of a movie, all caught on surveillance cameras. In the dead of night, three guys wearing masks and hoods roll up to Park Avenue jewelry shop. One of them is holding a sledgehammer. They smash through the front glass door and bust into the shop, breaking open various display cases and grabbing high-value jewelry. The trio makes off with a whopping $500,000 worth of precious items. Caught on surveillance, a bold snatch and grab unfolded at the Dillard store in Atlantic Station. In broad daylight, five men stormed in, making a swift entrance and grabbing whatever caught their eye. Two armed individuals arrived in a dark red SUV, assaulting a Garda employee and making off with a significant amount of cash. The incident led to an early morning exchange of gunfire in a densely populated commercial district. Thankfully, no bystanders were injured during the incident. The surveillance video shows the man counting money in front of the cashier, leaving it on the counter. But a brief distraction is all he needs to work his age-old move. With a friendly and seemingly charming vibe, the customer skillfully takes a few bills off the top of the pile, smoothly tucking them into his pocket. In an instant, he walks away with $1,900 without anyone suspecting a thing. It's kind of a magician's move. It's, a, it's an old game from a long, long time ago, um, and it just keeps circulating every so often. He appears to be very friendly, maybe even charming. If someone counts out money for you, once you take that money and count it out, don't let them touch it again, because that's when they're able to do the sleight of hand and hide that money in their hand and then eventually put it in their pocket while you're distracted. This incident clearly warns businesses to be careful with big cash transactions. Once a customer counts money, it's crucial not to let them handle it again. This precaution eliminates the risk of a sneaky operation, ensuring the full amount is rightfully kept track of. Some guys, armed with a hammer, thought they'd hit the jackpot by going after an ATM near a restaurant. First, they try the hammer, but it doesn't quite do the trick. So, they get creative. They attach a chain from the truck to the ATM's handle and give it a good shove. And guess what? It works. The vault pops open and they make a quick getaway with the cash. It's surreal to see, you know, your place of business and people just walking up and destroying property and trying to, you know, like basically tow away an ATM is, is just surreal. We actually had employees on site at the time, which is, you know, it, it's, I'm glad that the doors are locked and they're, they're inside safe. Um, but it's scary for them too. Um, I just get a call from them at four o'clock in the morning just saying somebody just tried to break into the ATM again. This whole thing is a reminder for businesses to up their security game, maybe with better placed cameras and such, especially around ATMs to scare off these opportunistic thieves.
A guy wearing a hoodie and a mask decides to raid a store, grabbing stuff and stuffing it into his bag. The employees freak out and call the cops. Before the guy can make a run for it, a full-blown food fight breaks out. The suspect starts chucking bananas at a customer, and it turns into this wild scene where two people are throwing snacks at each other. It's like something out of a comedy movie. Even though the person who stole things caused a lot of chaos, the food fight made everything quite strange. A woman captures cell phone footage of a man openly shoplifting from a Walgreens in San Francisco. The security guards are on it, telling him to leave, but he's just stuffing his backpack like it's no big deal. The woman recording is worried, saying she's seen this happen before and is concerned it might force stores to close. Walgreens has already shut down some shops in San Francisco, blaming it on theft problems. That guy had a black bag, big, heavy duty black bag. And he was just putting stuff in there. It's about our neighborhood, so that's the reason I took the risk. You know, we need to speak up. I feel there's no consequence, and they don't have any remorse, and they don't think about the people. They don't care about us, about the neighborhood, the people who go shopping, because that's our store. The video captures how daring some people can be, and it's clear that shoplifting is causing some real issues for businesses. Let's talk about a sneaky move at the Avenues Mall caught on tape. There's a trio involved, two women and a man. Now, these folks weren't there for a casual shopping spree. They had a plan. The women, sly as foxes, start engaging the man at the counter. It's all a distraction game. While everyone's attention is on the chit chat, the man smoothly goes about his business. He's got his eyes on those chains. Slowly and craftily, he slips them into his pocket, making them all seem like part of the regular shopping scene. The thieves, playing the role of typical customers, just fade into the shopping crowd. And, uh, they can't see very good, their eyesight is weak, so they want to see some chains and can you show us closer? He will put in his hand and pull like that and just go right there. All of them, all three of them are worth about 15000 That's That's a lot of money, that's a big loss, yeah. I hope they, they, they get caught soon and we'll get our stuff back. Their casual talk and harmless questions were the perfect cover, letting the man walk away with some precious loot. And get this, it took hours before anyone realized those necklaces were gone. Picture this, it's the dead of night and the security cameras are rolling. Two shadowy figures, faces concealed, approach the store with a purpose. One of them, with a stone in hand, makes a calculated move, smashing the upper part of the glass door. The shattered glass creates an opening, giving one of them a way inside. With the pieces falling, the person entering the dark store moves carefully with a clear goal of theft in mind. Here's a wild one for you. A crew decides to go after an ATM, armed with a tow rope and a plan. They roll up to the ATM, thinking they can just yank it out using their car. But hold on, things don't go as smoothly as they thought. The force they use ends up breaking the ATM, crushing their dreams of an easy heist. Facing failure, they make a run for it, leaving their hopes shattered. Now, you might think that's the end of it, but nope. These guys are persistent. They come back, smashing through the boarded up area, dead set on grabbing that ATM. As they push it towards their getaway car, a surprising twist. The ATM is empty. Turns out, these persistent thieves had some success before, hitting up government buildings. It's a crazy story that shows how determined criminals can be, and the challenge law enforcement faces in stopping these unconventional schemes. Check this out. At Target, there's this woman caught on camera doing something pretty wild. She's filling up her cart with all sorts of toys. But here's the twist. When she gets to the checkout, instead of paying for the toys, she only pays for a couple of drinks. This isn't a one-time thing. It looks like she's got a whole routine going on. The toys she stole, worth more than $1,000, end up taking over the entire back seat of her car. Aww. Do they have like a GoFundMe or something? It's not right not paying for something and taking it. It's like stealing. That's crazy. They should go to jail. It's a bold move that's got the authorities scratching their heads and teaming up to crack the case. These bold thieves went all out on a jewelry store, snagging a bunch of fancy watches that added up to a whopping $260,000. Now, 
in the middle of all this high stakes action, there's this guy inside the store. He seems like the go-to guy, holding the security gate open for the three daring thieves. They zip in through the front door, pulling off a heist that really hits the store owner in the pocket. It's the dead of night, and a service station becomes the stage for something pretty scary. A guy with a knife storms in, and the poor worker doesn't have much choice but to do what the guy says. The surveillance footage shows it all. Quick as lightning, the robber grabs $1,500 in cash and a bunch of cigarette cartons. The whole thing is over in a minute, leaving the night shift worker pretty shaken up. He suddenly pulled the, opened the door and then uh, started saying, uh, give me all the money, give me all the money, um, I'm, uh, I'll hurt you. You know, don't, don't push any buttons. I don't want to block him. I don't want to do anything stupid because you never know, like, you know, he might like do this and then it might hurt. First, um, I was like totally blanked out. After a while, uh, I felt emotional. That's scary, like, you know, he's, if, if, if at all he's observing me for a while, that's really definitely yeah. an issue. Oh, it's a horrific crime. Uh, it's disgusting. The police are coming for you. Uh, you will be arrested. Late night places like this can be vulnerable especially when there's no one around to see what's going on. Here's the scoop. At the Stonewood Mall in Downey, things got crazy at Daniel's Jewelers. These burglars decided to go for a smash and grab at the jewelry store. No time wasted, they break through the glass display case and snatch up all that precious jewelry. It's like they were in and out in a flash leaving chaos behind. On the morning of January 7th, things got wild at the BMO Harris Bank ATM. There's this 25-year-old guy named Nicholas from Houston, and he's got a partner in crime. They roll up to the ATM with their tools, crack it open like pros, and reveal the vault inside. But here's the kicker. They brought a stolen truck and hooked it up to the ATM vault with a chain. With a quick pull, they yank that vault out, leaving chaos behind. I woke up to the crash, got up, looked out, saw a truck crashed into the tree, both doors were open, never saw anybody. I'm surprised they picked this neighborhood. Kind of quiet, but still, oh my God, what are you going to do? These guys even come back later to grab the cash, thinking they're in the clear. But, surprise, the cops are on it. There's this crazy chase, caught on dash cam, ending in a crash just a few blocks away. Nicholas gets caught but his partner slips away. The whole thing was about snagging more than eight grand. Here's the scoop on the store heist in Wallingford. So, these guys were super gutsy, grabbing big TVs right in front of everyone. Like, they didn't care who saw. They just loaded those TVs into their car and the weight didn't slow them down one bit. Oh, you don't even Last one. We're not trying, we are. They made a quick getaway, and it was all over in a flash. Here's a tough one. A store owner facing armed robbers all alone. The surveillance footage kicks in with these guys bursting in, waving a weapon. Their eyes are fixed on the woman behind the counter. Turns out she's the owner, and she's all by herself. 
The tension in the air is thick as the attacker grabs her, pointing the weapon, and you can feel the fear. They quickly move on to snatch some cigarettes, making it clear this is a full-on robbery. The owner, facing this nightmare alone, has to open the cash register as ordered. She uh, can nip, can snip, and um, two days ago she can can work. Yeah, very scary. Uh, feeling very bad. Hope the the police get them. Suddenly this is, uh, happened, so we we very worry now. The whole scene is scary, and you can imagine the stress the owner must be going through. After the robbery, she gathered her courage and chased after them, even spotting them leaving in a blue Ford. This hits hard, showing how small businesses are prone to these attacks. These three men were on a mission to rob a jewelry shop when an old man came in their way at the entrance. One of these men forcefully pulled the man aside and entered the store fully armed. A group of eight individuals targeted a weapon store in Wright City. They crashed a stolen Hyundai into the store's front door, rushing inside to steal firearms and triggering alarms on the general manager's cell phone. After just one minute and 45 seconds inside, a driver outside honked to signal the need to clear the building. The individuals inside swiftly made their way through a hole in the wall to escape the scene. I think it's horrible. I think it's really terrible. As soon as the alarm went off, my cell phone uh, basically just started blaring. Um, and I, I looked at it and I saw uh, door sensors, motion sensors, and at that point I knew there was something severely wrong. I mean, it's extremely frustrating. You know, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into this. They either got lucky or, you know, they've been through this before with other break-ins and they know how much, about how much time they have. So um, they were able to get in and out in about two minutes. That keeps going and people coming from wherever, whomever, destroying our neighborhood, people are going to get scared. Law enforcement officers were less than a minute away from catching the suspects in action. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. Shocked onlookers captured this video of luxury jewels Beverly Hills being robbed in broad daylight. Five individuals wielded sledgehammers, breaking the glass front door, and forcefully grabbed whatever they could, all while terrified workers were just feet away inside the store. Their quick escape involved a white Audi waiting in the alley behind, not without a scuffle with Wesley Aframian, who works nearby. The brazen robbery resulted in the theft of jewelry worth $5 million. Shots. I thought it was shots. I told everyone to get on the floor. I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there. And I just heard like a pop. So I thought it was a and I started yelling for Peter. And I was pressing the alarm, trying to call 911, and I look up and I just see them with sledgehammers, grabbing everything. They're starting to run. I push them into the street. He drops a few watches. He was trying to like push me back. He had a big tray of watches in his hands and like an ax. So he kind of turned quickly at me and like the ax was swinging towards me. So I had to back off. And I know Peter's allowed to carry a I was just yelling, just shoot him. I would just him. I don't care. We shouldn't be on the news for like crime seen happening in Beverly Hills. This is really upsetting. However, the owner emphasized that the most valuable assets in his store are not jewels, but the employees who are like his family. Happy no one's hurt. That's all that matters. Honestly, since these are my family, my employees, they're like my family. So as long as no one's hurt. He expressed gratitude that despite the ordeal, no one got hurt. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.